so this is a journey this is a journey through three cities mumbai ahmedabad and shillong through for, with 42 writers and 160 stories and a little disclaimer at the beginning i am an articulate writer not a narrator so i'm going to read you my story and you're going to listen so listening this is a phrase that i'll constantly be using today this act of listening the patient act of listening is what you are going to indulge with me today so let's begin by talking about people and places what is a place a home a settlement a village a city a nation how do we understand a place for this discussion let's take the case of a city so how do we understand this place called a city perhaps through its history, through its histories through landmarks and architecture through cultures and traditions to me a city is a complex organism with an overlay of history geography socio economics and politics how does one talk about this kind of an intricate maze of systems and subsystems and that too in a wholesome and plural manner one way is through stories stories of its people people who have inhabited it created it and shaped it so this was the premise of the first this was the premise of the first experiment that we undertook that is people call mumbai so what we tried doing was explore mumbai through stories of the mumbaikers 55 stories of mumbaikers to be precise this started out as a workshop at our studio and the brief was simple let's try to understand mumbai through personal narratives the argument being that finally your story and my story are what comes together and forms the city story so i'll give you an example uh, one of the stories written by sachi marvin kurve about inder bhai or inder singh who sells grains at kabutar khana in dadar so this story not only ta talks about the life of a street vendor in mumbai and the chaos and the geography around dadar railway station but it also digresses to talk about his father who was a mill worker and through his father's story the story of mumbai's uh, mill history is spoken about the the strike the eventual shutting down and his temptations with the crime world and finally his resolve to of honest labor and deciding to sell grains at kabutar khana so this is the shop that inder singh has inherited from his father similarly there are a range of stories that surfaced through this experiment so we have a photographer at juhu chapati who doubles up as a lifeguard a successful businessman from bhuleshwar a stranded tourist who now rides ghoda gadis at gateway of india the city's only tibetan restaurant an artist on the pavements of kala ghoda which is incidentally a cultural district a japanese buddhist monk one of his kind in the country maybe uh, a very relaxed story about jinny ben who is a potter's wife a brazilian martial arts expert this famous uh, duplicate of anil kapoor so there are these range of stories and what happens is with these whole range of people stories coming together in the space of a book what it offers is a very plural reading of the city so there is no one reading there are multiple readings of the city and this is the this is the idea that it tries to emphasize so this is the first take away an overwhelming understanding that there are so many people around us with such fascinating lives and there is so many more stories waiting to be heard from our every day all we have to do is pause and listen like you are listening right now the second city a year later we decided to explore this idea in another city and that was this city apnu ahmedabad and i am going to read to you on this note an excerpt from a story written by shri ram natrajan about discovering amdabad the days are getting hotter in amdabad the light is piercing bright and the white buildings of the city reflect it all like mirrors time has come to start the day early but the summer sun in amdabad is not only uncomfortable 
but it can be downright dangerous. At around 8 a.m., I cross over the Ellis Bridge and the sun is already blazing. The Sabarmati looks alluring and I have half a mind to jump in and have a little swim. I had planned to head all the way to Watwa across the city to visit kutub e alam Darga, but then decide to limit my exposure to the sun and head instead to Manik Chowk. There is the Mujawar at Bachami Hajiro, which that I have planned to meet. Today, I am looking for stories and myths that constitute the imagination of Ahmedabad's history. Being a medieval city with more than 600 years of history, there are a lot of myths and memories and stories waiting to be discovered in its narrow streets and mohallas. The idea really took shape during the discussion with Hamid Raj, a faculty at SEPT. Hamid had once said, Walk around and get lost in the streets. The best way to talk to people, the best way is to talk to people because Ahmedabad's history and myths form a part of the collective consciousness of the city. We are told these stories as children. Old grandmothers tell their grandchildren at bedtime. There are tales told by old Mujawars, holy men and even trams that roam the city. In this way, the city's mythology is kept alive. For example, an entire community that lives around the wind city of an old Darga will know its history and significance. I agree with Hamid's suggestion. But my only worry being that each person I talk to will have a different version of the story. And then I will be at loss as to what to write about. Well, they are all equally valid, says Hamid. That's how stories are. It's less important to know which one is true or the correct one, but rather what each story tells you about the city. The beliefs of a person narrating it to you, that's why it's important for you to simply wander around the city and talk to as many people as you can. So this is the second takeaway that I'm going to stop the story there. Uh, this is our second important takeaway from the project that there is no one version to a story and perhaps there is no one truth. There are many truths that a city encompasses and each is valid in it, each is valid and composite in its own fashion. Cut to 2017 and we were set out to explore the third city, Shillong. Shillong is nested in the eastern uh, Khasi hills a city with very different and distinct culture from the western part of India that we live in. During the course of writing, we not only connected to a new place and new culture, but also the, this act became a, uh, this act became a self act of self-reflection because we started reflecting on our own cultures, our beliefs and our own histories. Let me give you an example. For many who have, uh, many writers who are visiting Shillong for the first time and many of them who belong to the western and northern part of our country, the matrilineal system of the place was a surprise in pleasant ways and in unsettling ways. Being consciously and subconsciously uh, used to patriarchal ways of living, it was unusual to watch entire markets, offices, households being run by women. Here, the, uh, the, here, the act of unsettlement was an act of self-reflection. Another example. As city slickers, we are used to seeing grey concrete landscapes as cities. The presence, like Shillong has an omnipresence of nature around it. There are painted skies, blue, uh, blue skies, painted clouds, all greenery everywhere. And this can be often disorienting for a city slicker. And we are quick to paint it as a hill station. Well, hey, it's not a hill station. It's a living, breathing city. So our third and most important learning, that India is indeed many Indias. It's diverse and distinct. And often we assume that we have understood our countrymen and overlay our version of Indianness on them. This is a haste, a lack of understanding, perhaps stemming from not engaging with each other's stories intimately. And on this note, I will conclude with how this journey of story finding has affected us all, the writers. Well, it has changed us definitely. 
each conversation, each person we have met, each story we were compelled to write has changed us. These are stories of so-called ordinary people, people whom we would have rarely given a thought about or engaged with in a conversation otherwise. However, each conversation opened us to look at humanity. Some people inspired us, some people brought joy, and some moved us. Many of us have literally sat at our keyboards, struggling to find the right words to express their story. And yes, we have made many friends. The last takeaway. We have realized that it is indeed about taking that pause, exercising your ability to listen, and finally, the act of reflection. Only an act of reflection will enable us to truly appreciate the life around us, the people, the places, and the diversities. And in turn, we can have a world of peace and empathy. Thank you for listening.